Good day, students. So we have our um, new video, which is all about the music of the medieval period. So we matagal tagal din tayo di matleso. Sa dumang mahabay, pero this is the new video of um, one of the lessons in grade nine, uh, mapping. And ngayon magpapokus mo na tayo dun sa ating component na music and our topic for this day will be the music of the medieval period. So dito i-unlock natin kung sino-sino ba yung mga naging composers of this period. Ano-ano ba yung mga instruments na pinaka naging kilala ng this era. So these are the objectives for this topic. First one, understand the characteristic features of the medieval period. Second one, reflect on the music of the medieval period. So, mamaya makikita natin that more on the music or more of the music of the medieval period is ano yun, no? uh, mas nakafocus dun sa ating mga church songs. Although meron pa rin naman tayo mga pop songs during that time. Pero ang pinakang focus talaga ng music na to is more on the church songs or the sacred songs. Then, next one, appreciate the value and sacredness of the music of the medieval period. We're going to create an own basis about the importance of the medieval music, express in written form the importance of sacred music, inspire your schoolmates to listen to sacred music, and last one is be a good role model in giving importance to the sacred type of music. So those are the objectives that we hope to achieve after this discussion. Okay. So let's start the music of the medieval period. So we have here the music periods that we're going to discuss for the whole quarter or rather for the whole um, school year or academic year of MAPE 9. No? So we have the medieval period from 450 to 1450s, the renaissance period from 1400s to 1600s, the baroque period from roughly 1600s to 1750s, the classical period from 1750 to 1830, and the last period, the romantic uh, period from 1830 to 1920. So these are the five subtopics that we're going to unlock for this topic. The first one is the vocal music of the medieval period. Second one are the instruments of the medieval period. Third one is the Gregorian chant. Fourth one are the popular or popular composers, and the last one is the troubadour music. So those are the topics that we're going to unlock after this lesson. So let's define first or let's uh, explore first the main history or brief background about the music of the medieval period. So let's see. It is also known as the Middle Ages or Dark Ages. So ito yung mga panahon ano, na kung tawagin natin is um, panahon talaga ng, gur- uh, ng gulo where is uh, dati nag-dominate ang Roman Empire but on this uh, period it is started no? or dito nag-start yung pagpagsak ng isa sa pinakamalakas na hukbo noon which is yung Roman Empire so it is the time of plague, the time of war so that's why it is it was called as the Dark Ages so Christian Church influenced Europe's culture and political affairs not just um, sa music sila nag-influence na. Even dun sa history ng dance, napakalaki ng um, influence ng Rome or ng Roman Empire dun sa, ja, ah, sa dance na tinatawag. Dati naman kasi uh, yung dance naman is not a form of worship para sa mga Catholic or sa Christian Church. Ano, that is not a form of worship. Dahil noon, ang Romans kasi uh, every time na sila is naka or nag uh, what is this yung sumasakop ng iba't ibang nations lagi silang of course kinakapture nila especially yung mga babae no dun sa bansang kanilang sinasakop and yung mga babae na yun yung, yun yung mga nagiging entertainers no dun sa mga Roman uh, soldiers dun sa mga matataas na katungkulan no that's why uh, yung dance nga ay hindi maganda uh, para sa Christian Church that time kasi ginagamit nga ng Romans yung dance bilang isang entertainment no and yun nga ang mga pinapaseo nila is yung mga women 
na kanilang kinakapture mula doon sa bansang kanilang sinasama. So, medyo ano no, uh, hindi maganda yung tingin ng Christian Church pagdating sa dance. So, nagbago lang yun nung bumagsak nga itong Roman Empire, unti-unti na inadapt ng Christian Church ng Catholic no, na yung dance is going form of worship um, and yun yung ano naging simula na kung saan yung sayaw is naging sacred na din no um, dati naman ginagamit na yung sayaw bilang form of worship pero hindi sa Christian or sa Catholic Church ginagamit yung sayaw as a form of worship ng mga pagan people or yung mga pagano kung tawagin so they do believe na kapag ka sumasayaw sila as form of worship is binibigyan sila ng kapangyarihan like for example um, kapangyarihan ng araw No, so yun yung ano reason nila dati why they are uh, dancing. But in music, yun nga yung Christian church is malaki yung naging influ- uh, influence pagdating sa kultura ng mga uh, taga Europa. So this is when musical notation began as well as the birth of polyphony when multiple sound came together and formed separate melody and harmony lines. So yung polyphony natin class, uh, when we say poly, it means many ano and yung phony natin it means sound so yun yung ibig sabihin niya multiple sounds so yung musical notation natin ngayon yung musical notation natin is accurate no meron tayong musical notation na or yung modern musical notation na nakikita natin nowadays pero during that time yung musical notation is not uh, that accurate pa eh. as in medyo magulo pa siyang hindi medyo no talagang magulo pa siya tingnan pero that is the start of musical notation. So that is how important music of the medieval period is. Kasi kung wala naging music ng medieval period, siguro hindi na-develop no, yung mga musical notation na meron tayo, hindi na-develop yung uh, kinds of music na meron tayo. So that is how important uh, music of the medieval period is. So church music dominated the scene, although some secular folk music heralded by troubadours were found throughout France, Spain, Italy, and Germany. So dito, sa era ng medieval period, church music talaga yung pinakang nag-bloom, ano? which is yung Catholic Church talaga, yung Christian Church. Ayan yung pinakang uh, nag-bloom, yung mga songs noon by the Gregorian, no? uh, which is yung tatawa, uh, didiscuss natin mamaya na Gregorian chant. No, although yun nga, meron naman tayong mga secular music that time or mga folk music na ang mga kumakanta naman nun is troubadours. So dito, sa Gregorian chant, um, jump tayo sa Gregorian chant, it is a monophonic vocal line. Kanina may polyphony tayo which means multiple sounds. Yung monophonic naman natin, when we say mono, it means one. No, so monophonic, it means one sound. Okay, so... Um, it is a monophonic vocal lang, uh, line sung by monks as well as choral music for a group of singers were among the main types of music. So yung mga monks natin during that time na kumakanta ng Gregorian chant, they are a group of men. No? Ang ano talaga niyan, ang pinakang uh, major group talaga na mga kumakanta inside the church is the group of men. So yun yung mga monghe dati. Ano? And... Um, the song na kinakanta nila is yung Gregorian chant. So, kanina, ang pinagkaiba natin, we have the polyphony which means multiple sounds. Kapag ka sinabi nating multiple sounds, ayan yung parang ano natin ngayon, ano? Um, choir, which is meron tayong bass, alto, soprano, and tenor. When we say monophonic naman, pwedeng marami yung kumakanta, pero unison lang yung tunog nila. Or when we say unison, iisa lang yung tunog nila or sound nila. No, so that is uh, monophonic uh, vocal music. So or monophonic vocal line. So yun yung pinagkaiba ng ating Gregorian chant, no, dun sa ating uh, secular music. Uh, some of the secular music is ano rin eh, more on polyphony din. Pero mamaya makikita pa natin kung ano pa yung difference ng Gregorian chant and ng um, secular music or yung tinatawag natin troubadour music that time. So, yung Gregorian chant is kinuha yan sa pangalan ni uh, St. Pope Gregory the First. No? So, doon nakuha yung title na Gregorian chant. So, let's move to the vocal music of the medieval period. So, dito sa vocal music, meron lang tayong dalawa na i-discuss. The first one would be the sacred music. 
and the second one is the secular music. So ano ba yung pinagkaiba ng dalawang to? So sacred music from the word from the word itself sacred ano. So when we say sacred ang ginagamit ito is of course para sa simbahan or for the purpose of worship. So music is performed in churches for the purpose of worship. Music from the Roman Catholic Church is very important to the history and development of music in all eras to follow. So yun yung importance ng ating sacred music. Well, dun naman sa secular music, when we say secular, ito naman yung parang kumbaga mga pop music natin na meron tayo ngayon, yung mga worldly song kung tawagin. No, so yun yung yung secular music natin, those are the uh, folk music during the medieval period, uh, folk songs, yung mga um, court so uh, what it is, yung mga love songs, chivalry songs, yun, no, those are the secular music of that time. So it was folk music performed in public places by traveling musicians. So in traveling musicians dito na sinasabi, yan nga yung mga troubadours natin na i-discuss natin mamaya. So the musicians sung ballads and accompanied themselves on string and percussion instruments. So ito pa yung pinagkaiba ng sacred music sa secular music. Yung sacred music natin is ano to eh, unaccompanied. No? Yung Gregorian chant natin, karaniwan unaccompanied talaga siya. Well, yung secular music natin is accompanied, no? Or ang kanyang instrument na ginagamit is more on percussion instrument. So, string and percussion instrument. So, yan yung uh, pinagkaiba pa ng sacred music and secular music. Okay? Yung sa sacred music, ang karaniwang kumakanta, mga monks. And sa secular music naman is yung mga troubadours or yung mga traveling musician natin. So, let's move we have here the Gregorian chant. So th- let's dive deeper uh, deeper dito sa ating Gregorian chant. So it is the central tradition of Western plain chant, a form of monophonic. Yun nga, uh, when we say monophonic, one sound or one voice. Unaccompanied, ibig sabihin walang instrument, no? And sacred song in Latin. Yun yung kanilang um, lyrics during that time na ginagamit sa Gregorian chant, no? So Latin uh, language. So... Ayun, occasionally, a uh, Greek language, so of the Roman Catholic Church. It was traditionally sung by choirs of men and boys in churches, or by men and women of religious orders in their chapels. But again, laging tatandaan, when we say Gregorian chant, it is more on monophonic sound. No? So, more on unison lang. Kahit grupo pa sila ng kalalakihan o may kasamang babae, iisa lang yung kanilang sound or unison lang sila. Okay, so that is Gregorian chant. Singing has been part of the Christian liturgy since the earliest days of the church until the mid-1990s. It was widely accepted that the psalmody of ancient Jewish worship significantly influenced and contributed to the early Christian ritual and chant. So next, this is one of the earliest known system of notation. Ang tinutukoy natin dito is yung Gregorian chant. That's why Gregorian chant played a very big role pagdating nga sa music na meron tayo ngayon. Lalo na yun yung kauna-unahan or yung pinaka um, isa sa pagkilala uh, pagdating sa pagkakaroon ng system of notation. So when more and more prayers turned to chants, it became necessary to write them down. And singers developed a system of written symbols which is yung ginagamit nila sa system of notation called neumes to help them remember the chant. So yung written symbols na yun, yun yung parang mga notes natin ngayon no, na inilalagay natin sa musical notation natin. No, so yun yung uh, written symbols na ang tawag ay neum. So it helped the singers during that time to remember the sound of the chant no, or the tone of the chants that they are going to sing during that time. Then after the Gregorian chant, let's move to the troubadour music. Again, yung Gregorian chant natin was sung by the group of men or uh, mainly is monks na uh, monks talaga yung kumakanta. Well, sa troubadour music is um, ang pinakang kumakanta naman nito is none other than the troubadours or yung mga traveling musicians nga natin during that time. So, troubadour music, a troubadour was a composer, yun yung tawag, ano, and performer of songs during the Middle Ages in Europe. They were the first poets on record to write in the vernacular, skewing the lit- Latin and Greek which had dominated the literature of Western Europe for over a millennium. So yung mga poets or yung mga poems din nila 
is written in Latin and Greek. The texts of Troubadour songs deal mainly with themes of chivalry and courtly love. Many songs address a married lover, perhaps due to the prevalence of arranged marriages at the time. So, dito ang kung ang uh, Gregorian chants natin is more on sacred music, no? Uh, ginagamit sa simbahan, form of worship. Yung troubadour music naman natin, ang pinakang theme or tema naman ng mga kanta na ito is none other than the chivalry and courtly love. So, yun nga. That's why ito yung mga ballad songs, popular songs during the medieval era. Okay? Then, we have here the three main instruments of the medieval period. The first one is the lute. Then, the second one is the viol. And, the last one instrument is the harp. So, ako, personally, harp talaga is one of my uh, favorite instruments. Hindi dahil marunong ako na tumugtog ng harp. Ano? Actually, hindi nga ako marunong. Pero, sobrang relaxing talaga ng tunog kapag uh, pinakinggan mo yung isang harp instrument. No? So, those are the three major instruments during the medieval era. No? So, we have the lute, the viol, and okay. The next one, let's proceed to the last part of our discussion. We have here the medieval period composers. So, dito meron lang tayong limang discuss na composers or major composers, mga pinakasikat na composers during the medieval era. The first one is St. Hildegard von Bingen. So, si St. Hildegard, she was a German Benedictine abbess, writer, composer, philosopher, Christian mystic, visionary, and polymath. Those are some of her roles no, nung panahon ng medieval era. She was considered to be the founder of scientific natural history in German. And that is St. Hildegard von Bingen. The next one, we have Guillaume de Machaut. So, si Guillaume de Machaut naman, he was a medieval French poet. Kung meron man tayong dapat tandaan sa mga composers of the medieval period, uh, one of the best known talaga is Guillaume de Machaut. And he was regarded by many musicologists as the greatest and most important composer of the 14th century. And that is Guillaume de Machaut. The next one is John Dunn Staub. He was an English composer of polyphonic music of the late medieval era and early renaissance period so pag diniscuss natin yung renaissance period ha, ah, nandun pa rin to no? si John Dunstab kasama ni Guillaume de Five na i-discuss din natin mamaya he was one of the most famous composers active in the early 15th century a near contemporary of Lionel Power and was widely influential not only in England but on the continent especially in the developing style of the Burgundian school. So that is John Dunstock. Next one is Guillaume de Pai. So ito nga isa sa mga kasama din ni John Dunstock na composer pagdating din sa Renaissance or early Renaissance period. He was a Franco-Flemish composer of the early Renaissance. A central figu- figure in the Burgundian school, he was regarded by his contemporaries as one of the leading composers in Europe in the 15th, uh, 15th century. And that is Guillaume de Pai. And the last composer we have is Adam de la Hale. So he was a uh, French-born trouber or part of the troubadour or traveling musicians, poet and musician. Adam's literary and musical works include the chansons and Jupertis, no, which is a poetic debate in the style of troubers, polyphonic rondel and motets in the style of early liturgical polyphony, and the musical play Jude Rubin et Marion, uh, which is considered or which was considered the el- earliest surviving secular French play with music. He was a member of the Confrérie de Jungwa at Burgess de Arras. So that is the life of Adam de la Hale together with the five or four composers na na discuss natin kanina which is si Guillaume de Fay, John de Stubb, Guillaume de, uh, de Machaut, and St. Hildegard von Bing. And that is the music of the medieval period. Again, on this lesson, we discuss what is the brief history of the medieval music, you know, the importance of church music as part of the worship. We also discuss the troubadour music, which is ang mga kumakanta is none other than the troubadours or the traveling musicians. These are uh, most likely the popular songs that we have today. 
and we also discussed the Gregorian chant. Yung Gregorian chant naman natin, ang title na yun is Kinuha sa Pangalan ni Pope St. Gregory the First. No, and ang mga kumakanta dito is group of men or yung mga monks during that time. And yung Gregorian chant natin is uh, monophonic na kind of music. Well, yung troubadour music natin some, somehow or sometimes is polyphonic. Which means when we say polyphonic, that is um, many sounds or multiple sounds. Okay? We also discussed the three major instruments during the medieval period. We have the lute, the viol, and the harp and the last part of our discussion we discussed the five um, most uh, recognized no, na mga composers during the medieval period we have Saint Hildegard von Bingen Guillaume de Marchot John Dunstop, Guillaume de Pai and the last one is Adam Delahaye and that is the music of the medieval period now if you have any questions um, you may uh, comment it or type it in our chat box just drop uh, drop down the questions drop down the added informations or if you want me to discuss any topics in MAPE 9 or whether it's from grade 1 to college uh, just drop it down in our chat box and I will find some time no, to uh, make a video of your desired lesson okay so thank you very much for listening on this lesson stay safe and god bless see you on our next video goodbye